episode of Cecil or Something is brought to you by lynda.com. All right, everyone, I think we can all agree last week wasn't day the biggest video game news week in all of history, or, you know, the second biggest. It was a slow week. Anyway, uh, there's one thing I did that I, I've done it before, and it's always quite enjoyable. A young man uh, working on his uh, senior thesis and at university uh, wanted to interview me, and it worked out well with my schedule. I've done this quite a few times. I know for some of you out there, you have asked me, and it got past me, and I do apologize. I tried to make the opportunities happen as quickly as possible. It doesn't always work. Uh, some weeks are far better than others. But to that point, uh, the person was interested in games journalism. And I know a lot of you guys write questions. How did you get the job? What do I need to do? I'm pretty bad about giving a really glib answer, which is truthful, about the odd series and coincidences that allowed me to get my initial job on television, doing GameSpot TV for ZDTV. But I thought I would uh, take a step back and offer some of my thoughts on what really helps, what works, uh, if you really want to make the horrible mistake of covering the video game industry in written or video form. Um, so I come from the sensibility that Games, you can look at the technology, you can look at the audio, you can break these things down into all these little components, but um, even if those components are great, it really is the artistry that goes into creating the whole, that creates that experience of playing the game that really is the most important and actually is the most challenging aspect of the job. Uh, you know, one thing, and I've really always told people, if you're enjoying a game, Trying to find out why is really, really challenging. Uh, you know, it's, the, it's like the newest medium that's out there. And myself and for many of my colleagues, you know, we're kind of on the forefront of trying to figure out how to talk about it. And it's also a medium that is going through so many remarkable changes year to year to year and generation to generation that just when you think you kind of have a taxonomy to try to, you know, hold on to it, there's been enough changes and it's completely elusive. Um, it's, it, it's a fascinating and exciting aspect of the job, but um, what I've always kind of recommended is bear in mind a couple of things. Criticism does not mean being critical. It's, a, it's, a, it's always, especially for me, go look at the early episodes of X-Play. There's always a sense that you look more intelligent, that you, somehow your, your, your chops as a critic look greater the more negative you are. And I'm not saying don't be negative, uh, but don't look for the negative in an effort to somehow prop up what your argument is going to be. A very strong argument can be made by being positive. It can be more challenging to articulate it, but by no means is it not a strong argument. Also, when you're criticizing, or the idea of criticism doesn't always have to mean you are giving an assessment, you are giving a judgment. Sometimes it can be an investigation, why something works. I love, as kind of a thought experiment, to kind of isolate a small part of a video game and break down all the things that are happening that make it so remarkable. A, a great example of that would be the train sequence inside of Uncharted 2, uh, which I will never forget the sensation I had when I was playing it, which was, this is the most cool and awesome thing. I'm able to go up on top of the train or I can go inside of the train, I can do it whenever I want, and now it's going through a tunnel. There's a lot more going on than just what's on the surface, and the more you look at it, the more you really understand the remarkable creativity that comes from those great development teams. I also recommend, and also because I really, really enjoy it, uh, read other criticism, read other critics, read other sort of thoughtful people, and not necessarily about video games. Uh, definitely read sort of literary reviews. If you want a great challenge about something that's really tough to write about, art reviews, music reviews. I also love reading critical theory. Uh, it can be incredibly dense and obtuse and austere to a point that really isn't necessary because it's a lot of academics kind of slinging around fat words to look smarter than like what their colleagues are over at Princeton or at Brown or you know, Rutgers, something like that. But um, it can be really, really useful in getting your brain to go into a certain thought process, to be able to look at things from a slightly different angle and find that thing, that nugget that is more interesting. And it's a way of conveying to your audience a sense of excitement, you know, something that the game is offering more than just a good or a bad experience. Um, you know, if you want it, give Baudrillard a shot. A really fun one to read are the really fun essays from Roland Barthes. His book, Mythologies, is one of my more treasured possessions. Um, if you really want a fun one, Jacobson's Postmodernism or the Cultural Logic of Late Capitalism. Uh, these are, you know, there's probably even more stuff that's come out in the past five years, but because it's been so long that I've been hanging around at university, I'm not aware of them. Uh, this stuff can be really, really rich, really, really exciting. It really opens up ways in which you can cover a game. Um, at the end of the day, though, when you sit down and you play a game, don't worry too much of if it's good or bad. Like I said earlier, ask yourself the question why. Why isn't this enjoyable? Why is this enjoyable? It's really gonna be because there's a dragon in it. 
But like in the case of Skyrim, I knew something was working right, not because there was a dragon, but because that dragon finally acted like a dragon should, with a serpentine quality, instead of something like, you know, Lair, where it's like a dragon is just a scaly airplane. Just finding those special moments and then once again asking why. Why is that more effective? Why did I want it to look like a snake? Well, because it feels like it's more alive. It can be a lot of fun, it can be absolutely exhausting, and that is why one final caution. Um, I obviously love video games to death and I play them all the time, but because it is part of my profession because I'm always having to think about it. I don't know if I'll ever enjoy a game as I once did when I was eight years old and I was playing Mario just because I could jump and collect coins. On the topic of learning, you should definitely go out and check lynda.com. They're an online learning company with more than 77,000 video tutorials that teach software, creative, and business skills. You can learn anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace with courses in web design, 3D and animation, design, programming, and many more. New courses are added every single week. Membership starts at $25 per month, but you can try lynda.com for free for seven days and you'll be supporting Rev3 Games by signing up at lynda.com slash something. So uh, last week we did address the SAS and we got to some questions and by no means did we get to all of them. Uh, one was interesting, it was a question regarding HD remakes and what I think about them and what games I would like to see. Uh, this is something I, I, I'm all about a lot and it, it poses a very interesting question which kind of is related to what I was talking about earlier. I like HD remakes. Um, I think that there's, there, there really is a sense of convenience, you know, as I move on to another console. The older one goes into the closet, I don't want to pull it out and attach it to my television, but then another generation passes and it probably finds its way to a secondhand store or to you know someone's very young child because I want to look like I'm a generous person. Um, and it's, it's, it's anxiety inducing because this is an inherent problem with video games, that we're losing our history so much. You know, PC games, at least, we're having a, a, a way of preserving them, but for a lot of these console treasures, and the arcade games even more so, because the ability to experience it is so tied to a particular temporal piece of technology, um, it's very hard to kind of preserve that sense of history, unlike any other entertainment medium out there. Uh, HD remakes, uh, are a way to kind of recapture that. Now, the one key thing is it is not the original game. So for almost like ideas of inventory and doing research, you are not getting the same experience. You'll be using a different controller. Obviously the graphics will have changed. A lot of them do deal with certain touch-ups and certain um, improvements to make the controls and the functioning of the game more contemporary. I don't think that's inherently a wrong thing. It just is, does, it doesn't resolve the issue of the always disposable nature of the video game canon. Um, I, 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 I love them, I love re-experiencing them. One of the best uh, times I've had recently was trying to play the Jack and Daxter collection. I'm playing the first Jack and Daxter because, you know, that idea of the free moving camera wasn't there at the very beginning of the PlayStation 2. And just having those camera controls, I mean, it was always a tough game, and just how much tougher it was to unlearn everything that had, you know, was in my muscle memory over the ensuing 10 and 12 years. Uh, it's kind of fascinating to, to remind yourself just how far we've come be it good or ill. Uh, in terms of games that I would like to see, I would like almost all of Rare's games to be remade. I have such fond memories of them. I know that you can, um, on, on Xbox, there was uh, Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, but you know, some of the rarer ones, oh, that pun, uh, Jet Force Gemini. You know, one of the toughest, but one of the greatest games I ever played. There's just so many of those memories that I had of when I started out my job that it would be so great to go back and kind of re-experience them again. And, it is a double-edged sword, because sometimes it's like, wow, this is even better than I remembered. And many other times, I must have been fooling myself. 